Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. My name is KPZ. You're here on the home of the slightly above average ship review. I know I think I did the German destroyer line lately, but before or after I did the videos, <laughs> after I've reviewed the German tech tree destroyers, they reworked all of the German commanders, I want to say maybe two months ago. So we're down to here. We're in the T-22. We are in a domination match on whatever this map is called. And I know they just showed it, which makes me a moron. But we're going to be talking about kind of an underserved commander in the community in terms of his effectiveness, at least I think based on people's opinion. That's right. We're talking about Maximilian von Spee or Spey, depending on if you want to pronounce it correctly or not. And we're talking about his new fourth row skill called On Sunset. And this changes him from a commander that's eh, not so great to a commander that's pretty useful because he gives you a lot of the concealment that's been lost out of destroyers due to the various nerfs to Jersey Swirsky and Erich Bai performed by Wargaming over time. Okay, so again, when we're talking about this commander, Maximilian von Spey, I use him on the lower tier German destroyers, tier two, three, four. I also use him on some of the premium destroyers like Z35 and ZF6. Um, it, it's pretty much neck and neck now. If you'd asked me my opinion six months to a year ago, I would have told you don't put any points into von Spey. If you have blue Furiora, put points into blue Furiora. Her base trait increases destroyer speed up to 5%. And, you know, let's be honest, Von Spey's base trait is uh, not that great. It's called Misty Morning. It reduces the smoke jenner reload time by 6%. Whoopie-doo. All right. So, but now with the addition of On Sunset, we're a much stealthier ship. Stealth is your biggest advantage in the destroyer. Here we've got the Sabraza Telny. Tier 4 Russian, original tech tree line destroyer, very dangerous destroyer. We got super close to him. We're going to shoot some torps his direction and then light him up with these German guns. Now, it took him a while to get shots out on me. That's fine. You're a middle of the road destroyer. You can torp or gunfight, but you don't do either of them really great. Uh, but unfortunately, um, for us, um, it looks like he's going to dodge those torpedoes. And that's bad, because I was hoping to knock him out right there with those torpedoes. Because I will tell you, the Sabrazatelny, in my opinion, is one of the more dangerous destroyers at Tier 4. Especially when it comes to destroyer-on-destroyer destroyer fighting. Alright, now we don't have any sonar that the upper-tier German destroyers get. So we're kind of backing up here. And again, you can see our concealment. Well, I say you can see, I can't see. It looks like 4.6 kilometers, folks. So again, we're torping at the intended path to Sabrazatelny. Look at the hit point difference. He's got about half his hit points and I've got almost all of my hit points. So either way, that bodes well for us, especially when you get help from your teammates. See how rewarding it is when your teammates chip in and make your job easier. All right, Normandy, going a little overboard there, but I ain't complaining. So Sabraza Telny got evapped out of the game and we are capturing Bravo. All right, Mutsuki, a destroyer normally I would love to kill because it's a Japanese destroyer and they don't have good gunfighting ability at the lower tiers. Uh, somebody else just killed the Icarus. Why is this a tech tree spotlight? All the other ships are dead that I would have to kill. Uh, but see, that's where you're wrong. Because we can still kill ships. And especially now, because of On Sunset, we are much stealthier than many other destroyers at these tiers. So these battleships, we're going to be able to get up close and personal for putting the hurt on them with these German torpedoes. And the German torpedoes are, again, they're middle of the road. They're not as powerful as French or Japanese. They're not particularly fast. 
but they're not super weak. They're not super stealthy. They don't do just a little bit of damage like the Italians or the uh, the Pan Europeans. They're kind of right in the middle. They're uh, the just right porridge for uh, who's that chick that ate the porridge? Oh God! You know, Little Miss Muffet or whatever. Oh, she ate the curds in a way. Well, I can't remember who ate the porridge, but anyway, uh, the porridge is just right. Maybe that was a bear. God, I'm getting old. I can't remember any of this stuff anymore. I need that ginkgo biloba. By the way, kids, don't let me talk about the original uh, Br'er Rabbit. That's totally banned and not allowed to be read anymore. I remember reading it as a kid. Don't throw me in the briar patch. All right. Uh, <laughs> moving out here, we've got a Hawkins. We've got a couple of battleships. We launched some torpedoes. We've got tons of stealth on our side. We are just hoping to get torpedo strikes with our beautiful torpedoes. Nevada, whiff, totally miss. Hawkins, totally miss. You would think I would be discouraged by that. Oh no. Oh no, I am not discouraged. I'm emboldened by our earlier miss. You know why? Because those ships are gonna think, yeah, that guy doesn't know what he's doing, he missed. I want them to think that. Okay, because that's going to give me a little bit of an advantage. But not as much of an advantage as this concealment. It is massive, you know. And when you, the lower you go, the more massive it's going to get. You know, I want to say some of the lower tier ships, like the tier two, it's like 4.2 kilometers, you know. Um, and that's also why I play this guy in Z35. I know you think that's a gunboat. I think I've proven in my little sister video that Erich Bai belongs in Z39. And so in that case, why not put Von Spee here in the Z35? Just gonna give you more concealment, more ability to torp from stealth. Those higher tiers, that's how you really pile up the damage by getting torp hits and getting flooding, okay? And then if somebody gets close, you smoke up, hit that sonar, and you rip them apart with those 128s when they can't see you. All right, Hawkins moved in here. Why? I don't really know. But there are three torpedo strikes, a devastating strike, and kill number one. All right, still moving out on the Nevada, Nevada, Nevada. I would say if you're in Missouri, it's Nevada. If you're anywhere else, including Nevada, it's Nevada. Also got a Fuso over here. We switch our shell type so we can set him on fire. Check in the Nevada, he looks like he's running away. Fuso, on the other hand, we're going to get on the other side of the ship. Now, why is that important when you're gunboating an enemy battleship? Because he has his turrets aimed at the other battleships. Therefore, he is only able to shoot at you with the front turrets, or maybe his friend gets to shoot at you, or maybe his secondaries. So this ship doesn't have great secondaries. The Fuso, as you can see, look, he just shot into the water like five feet off the bow. The Nevada is a little more accurate. That's fine and everything. As you can see, the Fuso radically turned to avoid the torpedoes. He did get one and we're working on a reload at close quarters, folks. And yeah, we are facing his turrets now. You do take a little bit of damage there. I didn't really have a choice. And second set of torpedoes is out. Good night, Irene. There he goes. High caliber metal, kill number two. 95,000 damage with a couple of ships left in the game. All right, at this point, our team has a commanding lead in caps. The red team hasn't even capped the alpha cap yet. They got a Huga. And one other ship over there. We're just kind of making our way over there. Going to wait to repair my propulsion or steering or whatever it is before I hit this engine boost. Because, I mean, why would I want to waste it on a propeller that's not working properly? Um, and I guess I wasn't even going to do that. So we'll wait until it fully repairs itself. And then we'll hit the speed boost. All right, so Huga giving us the broadside. I can't really do a lot about it. 
because I only have 21 hit points left. At this point, I'm really not willing to fire my main guns unless I know with certainty that I won't be shot back at. So we're using speed, just trying to get within range. This is a scenario where a blue fury aura might have been more helpful. 5% boost to the speed. But that being said, in a destroyer, concealment is everything. Especially if you are a new player or not necessarily a great player at destroyers. We will give one wide spread to the Huga. I only need to hit him with one torpedo in my opinion. And we'll check his movement again and shoot the second salvo on the narrow spread. I use narrow spread for most of my torpedo salvos. All right, I guess we, we won't shoot. Look, look how greedy I am. I'm sizing up the Nevada, the other Nevada, Nevada, whatever it is. I'm sizing it up for my second set of torpedoes. I am just a greedy, greedy player. Uh, mostly because I think that Hugo is going to be toast. Now, see, I'm aiming forward here. I think the, uh, the Nevada and Nevada is not really going to do what I want in terms of steering. I also think the Hugo is going to dodge my torpedoes. He does by letting them run out. So at this point, I think the Nevada is a better target. We will launch onto the indicator. The Huga barely dodges a bunch of other torpedoes. And at this point, it's okay to be up close and personal because we've still got 900 meters to play with. Uh, sorry, 700 meters to play with. And we're going to turn and shoot some more torpedoes at the Huga. Because why not? All right, going back to Nevada. One, two, torpedo strikes. He starts flooding. He damage cons immediately. The Huga gets a Kraken unleashed. Um, and then more torpedoes being dodged. We still have three torpedoes headed that way. And we are looking at the two ships. Again, very reluctant to reveal my position because I just have 21 hit points left. Anyway, Nevada gets taken out, and we're looking at Huga. I'm waiting on this reload. He is going to, I think, successfully dodge all my torpedoes. All right, we're turning because we want to maintain a little bit of buffer between ourselves and the detectability of Huga. He is doing a good move there by changing his heading again. These torpedoes are probably going to miss. We do shoot down that airplane without being detected. Again, something we really couldn't do without the benefit of on sunset. And we're going to turn ahead of the indicator this time and launch another set of torpedoes at Huga, who is either on fire or flooding, probably on fire at this point. He's the last ship left in the match. He gets a Confederate medal. That's great and everything. But at the end of the day, the blue team is going to win this match because we accomplished the objectives. Hugo's turning away. I feel safe to shoot very badly aimed shots at him. It isn't going to matter. He is going to be dead soon. And can we get a kill pinch? That's really the only question left. And yes, we can. Yes, we can. All right. Here we are on the victory screen. Forget these milestones. That was like 10 campaigns ago. All right, high caliber medal, devastating strike medal. We ended up with 117,164 total damage, a whopping 11 torpedo strikes, three big kills, and an assisted base cap. We ended up with 261,311 silver and 6107 ship XP and commander XP in the T22. There we are at the top of the board. Two medals, three big kills, 2714 base XP. Hugo, you fought hard. You killed five ships. Congrats. But your team was not very good. And our team was. Balanced approach. That's how you win those games, folks. All right. Here in a minute, we're going to go into the port and take a look at the commander. Oh, we're going to look at the ship first. We're going to look at the concealment. 4.6 on the surface, 2.5 from the air, 2 kilometers when firing in smoke. At tier 4, I dare say that is an advantage over just about any ship. Here's the commander and the skill responsible. I do have it maxed out now. On sunset, 
At fully max, it will give you minus 150 meters to your torpedo detectability and minus 3% destroyer detectability, which makes you more concealable than before the nerfs to Swirsky and Bai. I hate to say it, folks. This rework was a good job by Wargaming. It made Von Spee a relevant commander in this game again. You don't have to buy, buy Blue Furiora if you don't want to. On Sunset makes these lower tier German destroyers or any destroyer in the German tree or a premium that you're trying to build for concealability, strong torpedoes. This is where you go. Von Spee and On Sunset. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. I'll see you on the next one.